my biggest question is that when you, um, your boundaries, Brene, I'm like boundaries, Bambi. It's like <laughs> new and wonky. We didn't, <laughs> we didn't grow up with those. And I find that there's a lot of pushback with boundaries or yeah. consequences or loss. Totally. Anytime you're like growing, it, there's a lot of loss that I didn't expect to go with it. Is, is that part of it? Yeah. Talk about that. Yeah, I think the simplest definition for boundaries, the one, I mean, I have like a bachelor's, master's, bachelor's from UT Austin. Um, <laughs> yes. Deepak School of Social Work, um, a master's in social work and a PhD in social work. And the best definition of boundaries I've ever learned in my life came from Kelly Ray Roberts, who's a friend of mine and an artist. And one day I saw on her blog, she wrote this article that said, here's what's okay and not okay when you're using my work. Like it's okay to share a copy of my work if it's attributed to me, it's not okay to make a copy of my work and sell it on Etsy. Like here's what's okay and not okay, which I think is just like a massively helpful. So for me, when I set boundaries, one of the things that we do a lot is we don't use the what's okay, we just say this is not okay. Mm -hmm. And I find what's okay and not okay really helpful because then I can say to people, you know what, it's okay to be really pissed off, this is a hard conversation it's not okay to yell or pound the table, because that's scary to me. It's okay to do this. You know, it's okay to share your values with my kids, to a grandparent maybe. It's not okay to put down the way we believe in our family. You know, so here's what's okay and not okay. And the thing is, if you come from a first family where there were not a lot of, of boundaries, that's, that is tough and there's going to be a lot of emotion behind it. And there's gonna be a lot of, who do you think you are? It's this really, it's, um, it's not like anyone ever goes, oh, cool, cool, cool. No. You know, you say, <laughs> hey, you know, I'm sorry, you can't talk to me in that, that way anymore, right. or you can't yell or whatever, and then it's, then they don't talk to you at all, right. or something like that. So I don't know how to, is that just your sign that you know, yeah, and I mean, for me, right I'm going to be really honest. I, I, sometimes it's a sign that I'm doing the right thing. Sometimes it's a sign that I did the wrong way. Um, but I, I think this is, I'm a huge believer myself, a consumer of therapy. Mm -hmm. Like when you're setting boundaries yeah, in your family of origin, yeah. having a helping professional, a therapist, a social worker, a counselor, who sometimes I would just go in and be like, I just want to role play with you for 30 minutes. And then I'm going to cuss for 20 and I'll write you a check. <laughs> yeah, like that's it. Honestly, so it's, not, it's not how they receive it. To, it's to not be honest, how a boundary it sounds good. is received. No. It's just doing the boundary. That's it. Okay. That's it. I, I, I'm afraid my boundary has to be we have to go to the next question. Yeah. And I apologize. <laughs> Ma'am. Um, thank you. I, and I can't tell you how much pleasure, guidance, and everything you've given so many of us. And we all want to be your sister and be able to talk to you every morning on the phone. Um, I'm just curious. I love your. I love this concept of leadership and. I was married to a CEO, so, um, and I'm wondering how Wall Street is receiving this when, right. um, good. you know, they need a return on investment. That's a good, it's, it's a really good question because you can put all this stuff out there and at the end of the day, the people who perceive themselves to be leaders can go, yeah, no. So right. that so that was my fear when I told right. you I was nervous. And right. so I was like, you know, what's the touchy-feely Texas cussing girl mm -hmm. um, going to tell us about leadership? And so when it came out, it debuted at number one, Wall Street Journal, number one, New York Times, yeah. number one, yeah. published right. release. You know, it's the best-selling business book in the country right now. Right. Here's the thing, and, and I don't want to be like the rise of the machine girl, <laughs> but they're coming. Like AI, artificial intelligence, machine learning is coming. And I read this, this quote by Manu Shafiq, who's the head of the London School of Economics, who said, Leadership used to be about muscle. Today it's about brain, but moving forward it'll be about heart. Mm -hmm. What we know is what you will not replace, no matter how great the algorithm is, you won't replace what makes us uniquely human, which is courage, connection, and empathy. So I think people are paying attention, and I think there are enough companies today whose investment on their ROI mm -hmm. on teaching this work is incredibly high. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's happening, but it's a shift. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's a definite yeah. shift. Well, Thanks for the question. Certainly a welcome and Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Good. Hi. Hi. Karen. Uh, as I listened to you, I kept looking for the word 
forgiveness. And I would just love to know in terms of courage, empathy, strength, how important is the concept of forgiveness in terms of being a good leader? So it's really interesting because I have had a lifelong, career-long rumble with that word. Mm -hmm. And so I had a guidepost in The Gifts of Imperfection, which was one of my first books, right. around forgiveness. And two weeks before we went to publication, I pulled it because I had done actually a focus group with rabbis around forgiveness. And everything I thought to be true, they just were like, that's not, that's not our experience. And so I wrestled with this word. I couldn't get it to saturate, which is like the qualitative research term for, I couldn't get it enough across predictably. Yeah. So then I was sitting at church one day and the, I'm Episcopalian, I go to a church in Houston. And Joe Reynolds said, in order for forgiveness to happen, something has to die. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what? And then I just got up and walked out. And Steve's like, oh my God, she's coding data at church. Um, <laughs> which I feel like God was like, it's okay. Um, <laughs> then I started looking at forgiveness. And I, I wrote about it for the first time in Rising Strong. I think the reason why forgiveness, and it's almost going back to the first question that you asked. I think the reason why forgiveness is so hard for people is because it usually involves grief. Mm -hmm. And we'd rather stay pissed than, be, than grieve. We really, I mean, next to shame, grief is the thing that we fear the most. So we hold on and stay in this possibility or this anger rather than that. And so I think there's a huge part of leadership that's about not only forgiving others, but forgiving self. Mm -hmm. And the least forgiving people I've ever been around are the people who are so brutal to themselves. Right, that, that's right. You know, and so I think it's a huge part of leadership. Yeah. But there, are, there are people, as we bring the next question around, there are people who view strength as a leader in terms of never forgive, never forget, never regret, you know, that kind of person, that kind of personality. Yeah, so let me just, just this is this totally yeah. dumb aside, but I watch NCIS, because um, I'm in the over 50 demographic it's not the, now. It's not the worst show. <laughs> not the worst show you could watch. Go on. Yeah, and Gibbs, the main guy is always like, rule number 11, never apologize, never forgive. That's the that's that, yeah. that's personality Yeah, and I'm like, right. but he's tough. And you know, I'm a fifth generation Texan. Like, right, you eat glass for breakfast. We, I, I mean, yeah, like seriously. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, yeah, yeah. And then I'm like, he's like the loneliest dude on television. <laughs> Clinically deprived, I mean, like I could diagnose him, you know? And so I don't know that's a it, good it, way to it's live. It's kind of a tell. It's a tell, it's a yes. tell. It's a tell, hi. Hi, I'm Lisa Webb, and Hi. three years ago, I had a concussion. And after I came back from the concussion, I wrote, read Daring Greatly, which was most encouraging and helpful, so I thank you for that. Now you're fixing concussions, isn't that well, great? Well, <laughs> actually, I, it transitioned. You're racking it up. It transitioned my brain to a whole new place where what I'm trying to do now is I want to create a positive news network. And I'd like your opinion if you think there's a need in the world. Yes. After I look at your books and read all you've done, that I think the world could heal if we have a global positive news network where all society could contribute their stories. Yes. Thank you. Yes. I mean, yes. <laughs> yes. Hi. Hi. I'm Andra. It's an honor to meet you. Nice to meet you, nice too. To you. Uh, I feel like I know you, or you should know me, because I like watch YouTube and listen to you all the time. So I'm <laughs> like, hey, what's up? Um, so um, my question to you is uh, just the, the leadership and the work that you do. Uh, it's, it's resonating so much with so many, but what does kind leadership look like for you, and what are your thoughts around it in the schools today for kind leadership? early and and what do you what do you know that's happening uh, around you or are you planning to do anything for maybe early ed great question it's a great question so we just i mean don't go on the website now because i don't think it's i should, probably shouldn't be talking when is this going to air <laughs> oh we'll just keep it in this room okay <laughs> great it's just us i can tell you everything this is television uh, yeah. are we on television we're on television <laughs> oh i thought the television ended no, te oh, oh, well, then they're streaming it. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. okay. That just makes me feel I had better. To follow you off the cliff there for a second. Okay. Time. Yeah. <laughs> Join me. The fall yeah, is fun. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so, what about this? So, what we're doing is we just started a nonprofit called Daring Education, 
where we're translating the work for teachers. And not only are we teaching teachers the work, we're developing lesson plans to bring the work to kids. K through 12. It's a curriculum, right? It's a curriculum, yes. Yeah. Wow. And so that's all going to launch that's in the great. first quarter of 2019. Um, because I think, you know, we have this mission of making the world a braver place. And when I sat back and thought, and which we believe is audacious but attainable. Um, but when I thought about where are the big inflection points, mm -hmm. I think it's work, which led me to the leadership work. Because I think if you don't change the way we work, you can't change the world because we spend a lot of time at work. Um, and then I think the other inflection point is school. School, mm -hmm. you know, it's school, and so it's coming, and it's the exact all of this work. I think teachers are not among the, but the most important leaders Absolutely. in the world. Um, yeah, I mean, and so to give them the tools so they can deal with the, you know, with each other and their teams and their groups with administration is important, but then also how can they do a lesson plan on shame and guilt for four years old, four year olds or 14 year olds? So it's coming. I'm gonna be yeah. brave and do a part two. Yeah. Is I've been doing, I've been in the schools for th over three years with the kindness campaign. And yeah. if there's ever an, an opportunity to partner. Um, I love that. I am doing, the, I've been doing the work and we have a lot of interactive tools, so. I, I mean, I love that. And yes. I think kind of, and, and linking to ongoing strategies and people mm -hmm. already in, Yes. We are, we've been training teacher yep. administrators for a while, but I think it's important. So we'll find a way to connect. Good. We will. Thank you. <laughs> Sir. Hi. Hi. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I just have a question. You talked a little bit about the white moderate um, and a lot. Um, we all know these types of people that perpetuate. Uh, you brought up you know, racism, sexism, classism. Um, but then on the other side, you talk a lot about empathy um, and in some ways, um, just because I know a lot of these people, I find myself putting them as the other, and I don't have empathy for them. Um, so how do you think about teaching empathy in those situations uh, for people that are doing things that uh, perpetuate those types of things? I think that, you know, for me, like for me, it's, it, it comes down to my faith. So my job, my like my faith value, one way I operationalize that is to try to find God in the face of everyone I meet. Mm -hmm. And that includes my relatives whose, whose votes and beliefs I find unconscionable or incomprehensible. It's the neighbors I don't understand. Um, I don't think we can, ex if we extend empathy to only those who believe in what we believe, that, is, that bankrupts empathy by definition. Um, I think in Braving the Wilderness, I write, people are hard to hate close up. Um, I think we have to move in. And I think the exception to that is if the person we're moving toward, I don't think it's the responsibility of the people being targeted to set the table and invite people to it. I think it's our, you know, it's our job, other people's job to do that. And so I do think we can very quickly, and I have to tell you that I have seen a growing amount of hatred. I have seen a lot of people becoming exactly what it is they fear in others mm -hmm. in the last year. And I think we have to be very careful about that um, and extend empathy when it's really, really hard. Um, and I'm a solid C plus at it. <laughs> Just well, you, to be honest. You, you embrace the suck in that also. That's I embrace the suck in that also. And right, I think, right. yeah, I think the only thing that exception is, and I don't, I'm not articulating it well, if your beliefs diminish my humanity, I'm going to go back to question number one where I'm going to have a boundary. Does that make sense? Yeah. You, I have, just, to have, I, you have to have limits. You can't you be have empathetic to have limits. Yeah. toward and for everybody. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But I do think we, otherize, we can otherize people on both sides. It's a good point. Really quick. It's a great point. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, as, I, uh, as I told you, Dr. Brown stayed today so that she could be with us. We're going to let her get on with her day and on with her life and thank her enormously for her time. Please give her a big hand. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.